Scotty Scheffler was fighting the law last week. And he will return to see if he can <laughs> see if he can <laughs> avoid ending up in the slammer there, Nick. Uh, he will join Colin Morikawa, Jordan Spieth, and others at the Charles Schwab. Welcome, everybody, to Tea Time. I'm Andy from WagerTalk.com. Being joined, as always, by my fellow golf betting expert, Nick Borman. So... Uh, you guys that have been following us, first off, thank you. And we had a really, really good week uh, on the show last week. But as you know, at the end of the show, we are going to uh, – I always ask Nick some random questions about the tournament. We're not going to do that. We're going to talk about some of the worst beats that we've had because both Nick and I had Scotty Scheffler to finish in the top five, and him finishing eighth is one of the more brutal beats that we've had. So we're going we're gonna to scrap this. <laughs> there it is. I'm so upset he didn't wear it for his round. Uh, that, <laughs> that, that, that would have been that would have been great. So we're gonna take you through the Charles Schwab uh, and uh, do a course overview. We'll talk about to total strokes gain. We'll give you an outright winner, a top finishing position, and I'll go over players that can trip you up and DraftKings darlings. And then we'll see where does Scotty Scheffler getting arrested and losing a top five uh, rank with uh, beats. So Nick, we have a really interesting course this week, Colonial Country Club. Um, normally I do a deep dive and you know talk about the course features and everything i would say uh I, i'm a little uh, cautious about giving predictions about this 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 course has been completely overhauled this isn't like a oh we moved a t back <laughs> 10 yards this is a complete overhaul from 2023 to 2024 um couldn't i i found some videos about it but this is it, it's a finished product now, but there's just not a lot out there. So here's what we do know about it. It's going to play roughly 7,300 yards. It's par 70. Um, they've added a lot of like ravines and ditches. It really is to help more with drainage, but it is some hazard and some problem areas. Uh, wayward shots, they are going to be penalized um, if you get too squirrely off the tee. Uh, greens look to be pretty firm this week. Do not expect guys to be shooting darts like they did last week. So I don't think they're going to be as controlled. Fairways can be a bit tight. Trees and rough outside the fairways can give some players trouble. Weather looks like it's going to be an issue. Uh, Thursday, as of now, we're recording this Tuesday morning, thunderstorms on Thursday. Winds, um, kind of in the teens, uh, definitely over like 10 miles an hour, it looks like sustained. I, d I don't think it's going to get into the 20 plus mile an hour where it really, really throws guys for loop, but it is going to be a little bit breezy out there. So, um, yeah, like I said, Nick, I, I didn't want to go all in and say, hey, this is exactly how this course is going to play. They've made some changes to some of the grass. I mean, you look at some of the pictures, one hole was just completely bulldozed. I, it was just everything. It was all mud and dirt a year ago. So, um, I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It looks like it's a very classical old school type of uh, feel to it. That's kind of what I got the feel for, for the videos. But what's your take on this new Colonial Country Club we're going to see this year? Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of the guys are still going to have the overall sight line familiarity that, that, that existed before, but you got a couple a situation where, you know, a couple of par threes, the greens were moved to completely new location. has completely different putting services. And of course, that's going to change all the nuances of every little bump and swale and whatever on, on the green. So that that kind of levels the playing field as, as you're familiar with each of the greens. Um, and yeah, it's, it, listen, it's a tough course. Each of the last two years, Andy, the winner didn't even reach 10 under par, you, you know, off the tee is very important as far as accuracy goes, because it is tree lines. Uh, it is tight. It is classic. That is the defense you have. Um, and you look, you look at, you know, the, the, the distance they added 80 yards. So you're right. 7,300 yards in total. What we're and only two par five. So obviously it's just not a, scoring friendly type of a golf course uh this week and again the winds you mentioned that it's right now we're seeing 10 to 20 miles an hour uh basically every day and last year the winds were almost non-existent and he still couldn't even get to 10 under par so i do expect this to play uh, a lot harder than than last week for sure and at least as hard as la as last year if not some because than we saw uh, and you mentioned firm yeah that's that's it. You, you renovate a golf course. It takes time for greens to to create that thatch, that that layer underneath that kind of gets it a little spongier, absorbs shots. So this will should be firm uh, because it hasn't had a really true eighteen month window to grow in. It's only had a twelve month window. I mean, they were stripping the course Monday after last year's tournament. So uh, 
I, I would still look at course history as, you know, something to pay attention to this week. It's not everything. It's not all your eggs in the basket. It's not an Augusta National course history, but it still matters. You still want the familiarity, familiarity with the place um, because a lot of the holes still are, again, the sight lines. Where you're going to try to, you know, take your tee shot are similar. It's just some of the nuances of subtleness of where roll-offs are uh, and how the ball, again, rolls on the putting green are going to be a little bit different. But I think it still will matter. And if you look back at a, a little bit of history – of this tournament uh maybe this will change There's, there hasn't been a first time winner here since 2001 that was sergio garcia maybe kind of new finding new whatever on, on, on the track throughout kind of levels of playing field load. so we, that that's better chance for that to break than it's had in any years past past winners you got justin rose kevin kisner chris kirk zach johnson if their skill, skill sets tell us anything is that you certainly don't have to be a long hitter here to win. Uh, it always helps, of course, but you got to keep it straight. Um, and I mentioned each of the last two winners just can't even kick it to, to 10, 10 under par. So I think it's going to play tough, much tougher than last week, which is weird to say, considering it was a major. Um, and, I, and again, I think accuracy off the tee and keeping the ball in front of you is more important than you know trying to overpower this golf course. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think it'll be a good tournament regardless. You still got Scotty Scheffler in the field. Um, you got Jordan Spieth as the other you know fellow Texan as a highlight and Morikawa and Homa are the other two highlights as far as top 10 players in the world. So not a completely uh, John Deere classic type feel, but um, not quite the major we saw from last week either. But looking forward to this week. Yeah, absolutely. And if you guys are watching and enjoying the content, please hit the like button. Leave us a comment. Tell us who you like. Had a lot of good picks in the comment section um, from last week. So uh, tell us who you like. Uh, sometimes this, these are the forgotten tournaments. Uh, they're super profitable. Um, I love the weeks after the majors. So uh, I think you get a very, very, um, I get a very, you get a very bettable field uh, as if the big name players are playing after the tournament, you get a good feel why they're playing and how good they're going to be. So um, leave a comment, tell us what you like and hit the like button. If you have not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now, please. Uh, you get daily breakdown videos on MLB. We've got NHL, we've got NBA playoff games uh, coming down to the wire in those sports for the championship. So if you want all the best breakdowns, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, as always, leave a comment. Uh, tell us if you agree or disagree with anything that you've got in uh, the, uh, that we've said in the video. And looking forward to hear from you guys. We're building a really, really nice tea time community the, um, this year. So Nick, let's talk about total strokes gains. Take a look at this chart. Um, probably going to be pretty top heavy <laughs> i'm guessing based on the field this week so walk us through that and tell us if, if there's anything that we can learn from this chart this week yeah for sure and uh the, the biggest takeaway here is is that it, it, after a slow start to the season the winners are starting to come back uh to this this chart it's been uh, quite a few over the last few weeks obviously scotty won several of them xander last week there's been a lot of guys now in this list that are starting to win again. I think we always kind of see that every year as the season really starts to get into gear and the routine really starts to get be there for everybody. The, the, the best tend to rise towards the top. And of course, this is no surprise here as far as the list goes. It's going to mirror, uh, at least the very top of this list is going to mirror what you're going to see on the odds board. Scotty Scheffler, you know, what he's done over the last, well, it's longer than 12 months. You go back 24, 36 months. But just in this graphic here, 12 months, averaging over three shots gained per round on the field is insane. And then you break that down even a shorter period of time. And in the last three months, you're talking over four shots gained on average on the field is just insane, stupid numbers. So clearly he's the number one uh, favorite here this week. Plus 275 to plus 280 was the best number I saw. I mean, I get it, I guess, at the Hero World Challenge, but <laughs> at this type of a uh, tournament where you still got you know fellow top 10 players, there's quite a few in the top 25 or top 30. Um, I mean, it's not a horrible feel by any means, but it's just crazy and shows you how strong he is. The guy gets arrested and still finishes in the top 10 uh, last week. And then you can see the the breakdown as we go forward. No surprises, I don't think, in the first you know three or four names, Morikawa, Homa, even Harmon there with the Open Championship kind of in that 12-month window from last year. But then as you drop down the list, you'll get a couple surprises, guys you may have forgotten about that have gone through hot streaks, cold streaks. Uh, Lucas Glover, great end of the season last year, hasn't done a whole lot this year. JT, the postman, I mean, we I was riding him very early this year. I feel like January, February, maybe March, I can't remember. But in shorter period of time, I mean, look at that fall off he's had over the last three months. I don't think we've talked about him on the show in the last two months for sure. Uh, he's down there at 80 to 1, but longer sample size. He has been playing well, and he is actually falling in the top 10. And then I put the biggest names at the bottom as far as notables. Not quite in the top 10 as far as 12 months goes, uh, but Spieth, 
Siwoo Kim, who's been very steady until last week, uh, and Tony Finau, who had a good, pretty good showing last week, uh, round off the bottom as far as eh, notable players, big names that most people would probably look at. Um, but they kind of, eh, a little up and down. Nobody's just like Scotty is, uh, or well, at least Morikawa is kind of consistent. So, but that's your that's your top ten right here, Andy. Uh, you know, I would recommend yeah. for outright betters this week. I think every book's going to offer it. Without Scotty Chef and Mark, it's probably the way to go. Um, you'd hate to be on a guy like Denny McCarthy, 50 to 1, <laughs> for him to finish runner up to Scotty Scheffler when you could have cashed him at maybe 45 to 1 on the without Scheffler market. So I very, very highly advise to, to wait. Um, I noticed usually these markets come out on Tuesday, maybe, maybe Tuesday night, but they will be out there uh, without Scotty because I think that's kind of where you should dabble in the outright markets this week. Love it. Um... I got to tell you, it's nice having Colin Morikawa and Victor Hovland back in our lives as, yeah. as kind of contenders. Was a nice surprise, that was, yeah. That was nice. I, I hope we see that. And I, <laughs> I think we will. They, they talked about Hovland getting, getting, you know, getting his swing coach issue taken care of. And his coach finally is like pushing back on him and saying, you know, you don't know best. So let's do it this way. And sure enough, there's been success. Like Morikawa, uh, the guy still can't putt, uh, is, his last round was man was that tough to watch but yeah um, it's yeah. nice it's nice seeing more guys up at the top of the leaderboard so all right let's go to players that can trip you up boy nick it's funny you mentioned a couple of big name guys who you think people might be looking at because i've got two of those guys on my list of players that i think guys are going to be betting on and i'm here to say these guys are going to trip you up let's start with tony finau um, listen, he finished top 20 in two out of the last three weeks. That's great for him, but he didn't crack the top 10 in those. Uh, he's priced as a top five favorite. No chance I'm betting on him this week. Outside the top 20 in total strokes gained the last three months. His putting is minus 0 0.25 the e. last three months. He missed. Yeah, it's bad. He missed the cut here last year. And at this price, no way. Tony Fino, top five. Uh, no. No way. Uh, there was what was it? Was it the Mexico Open where it was him and Rom? Yeah, yeah. That was the only. That was the only time where you could justify having him priced as like a top five guy because him and Rom were finishing like first and second. But yep. even in a field like this, and of course like this, no, no, Tony, no way. Uh, second player to talk about Min Woo Lee, Nick. You know, um, you know, I've been one of the few people kind of fading Min Woo Lee and saying he's overrated, and he's finished twenty second. 24th and 26th in his last three tournaments. That's good. Uh, but he's finished 40th and missed cut the last two years here. He's priced as the sixth highest betting favorite. No, 20th in total strokes, strokes gained in this field. And I think finishing around 20th is probably accurate for him. I think that's where he's going to finish. But that is so far below the price that you have to pay for him. So DFS, no, I'm not going to put him in there. Top 10, no way. Top twenties, uh, that's <laughs> dancing. I think you're, you're, I think you're playing with fire if you're, if you're there. So uh, I think he's too expensive. I just don't quite see the upside with Min Woo Lee, even in a watered down field at this course. So, and then finally, you mentioned him, Jordan Spieth. I th this is I, I hate when the books do this because they have him priced as a top three golfer. And does that make any sense to anybody that's followed golf? Of course, from, it makes he's sense. from Texas, Andy. It's, Come on, it, 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 <laughs> exactly. So he's from Texas, so that means he finishes, you know, in the top five every time. But he doesn't. He has <laughs> one finish better than 29th this entire season. That was a tenth place finish a couple months ago. He's outside the top 40 in total strokes gained in this field the last three months, and. I, I don't understand why he's priced this high, but I do get it from the books because they put a big name out there and they probably get outright bets yeah. on him and top five yeah. and top 10. And it's so dirty. It's, it's, it's so, <laughs> so dirty. I, I know it's people are free to do what they want, but putting Jordan speed as a top three golfer at 10,600 on DraftKings and DFS is criminal. Absolutely criminal. He's more than Max Homa. That, that's, that's, that's unacceptable. Um, so Jordan Spieth is a player that just you want nothing to do with this week. So Tony Finau, Min Woo Lee, and Jordan Spieth, those are three players that I think can trip people up as they are completely overpriced. So we did good in this uh, last week. John, John Rahm was our number one player that could trip yeah. up last week. And yeah. I, I, I'm still, man, I'm still all in on this. these live 
these live guys are just are not living up to the hype when they come over here. So um, cashed our best bet fading Dustin Johnson. There's another guy coming over mm-hmm. from live who's given up, but kudos to you uh, for being all over Bryson. Uh, I did not hear, did not hear too many people over Bryson DeChambeau. It was such a great look. Um, uh, he was great in head to head, great in DFS. Um, I had, by the way, I had Xander and DeChambeau in my uh, DFS. I finished 10th out of oh, 200 people, but I had, I had Denny McCarthy who missed the cut. So I finished yeah. 10th out of 200, even though I had a guy that missed the cut would have been my best, my best player of the year. So, uh, yeah, you nailed it with, uh, Bryson. So let's go over an outright <laughs> winner. Uh, but first Nick, tell everyone what you have up at wagertalk.com or where we can find you at. Yeah, no, nothing more frustrating than riding next for several weeks, finally getting off of him and going to DeChambeau, <laughs> only to see him then finish runner-up. So I've got the runner-up covered like the last five events, so no problem there. Uh, Andy, right now at my page at Wager Talk, I do have uh, this week's tournament pack uh, available. Not all plays have been loaded, but uh, one play is up and loaded right now for the Charles Schwab, so that is available uh, right now. And then I also have uh, the weekend card for MLS. Uh, been a great season, up uh, 24 units so far on the year, going for six straight winning MLS seasons. So it's uh, been a great uh, run over the last couple of weeks. So we'll hope to continue that as we move forward. Of course, those we, there's basically every every single weekend uh, there's MLS matches. So um, that's coming up this weekend as well. And both of those are available right now at my page at wagertalk.com. Uh, I mean, you, you, you danced around Bryson. I thought we were going to a playoff there. Xander lips it in. So let's go back to an outright winner here. All right. Like to this week. Sometimes I like these tournaments because I kind of, I can say like, oh, I haven't kind of looked at this guy in a while. Uh, I've been paying attention to him, but I, I, I haven't bet him in a while. And that's Harris English, who's a four-time PGA Tour winner. Uh, most people kind of forget that. He just doesn't, he has that face where you look at him, you're like, this guy hasn't won anything, but he's a four-time winner. And He's quietly been playing very consistently over the last 10 months, Andy. So if you go back to last year's Open Championship, he's got just one missed cut in that span of now 17 tournaments. Uh, He finished tied for 22nd or better more than half of the times. Nine of the 17 starts, he's right up there at that top 20 level. His run includes very good results this year, tough tracks, deep fields. We're talking signature events. We're talking majors. So he had a... You know, tie for 18th at the PGA last week, tie for 22nd at the Masters, 19th at the Players, 21st at the Arnold Palmer, and 7th at the Genesis. Again, all strong fields, all tough tracks, and you know that's just since February. Being another tough course this week, though, with a weaker field, I would think that we should see him finish a little, you know, even higher uh, up on the leaderboard, maybe with that chance for an outright cash. He's an excellent putter. Uh, you mentioned fading fee now for the fact that that guy is, is trying to roll a square golf ball around. But this guy is very good putting. He ranks eighth in strokes gained putting this season. His short game is actually pretty strong as well. He's gained strokes around the green in nine of his last 11 starts. He also ranks 19th in total driving this year. Most of that is because he's very accurate. He's 19th in fairway percentage uh, hit this year. And he does carry a little bit of pop. It's not like he's long, but he's not short either. He's just slightly better than average as far as distance goes. So he's not losing anything there, but he's very, very accurate. So uh, I like him this week to stay in play, keep the ball in front of him, find the greens, you know, roll on a few more than most of there. So as long as he can minimize mistakes, which he's clearly been doing, uh, I think he's going to give us a chance on Sunday. He'll be somewhere in that mix. Uh, 35 to 1 on him this week, I think is a pretty good price. So, Harris English, I'm looking at. And, like Nick mentioned earlier, don't forget to look at the markets uh, winner without Scotty yes. Scheffler. Those should be yes. coming out on Tuesday evening yes. or something. You, it's going to be tough to it'll be tough to beat uh, Scotty Scheffler this no week. Doubt. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're probably going to get a little bit lower odds, but man. Having a having an ability to take a guy without Scotty Shelfer is good. Yeah, Harris English under the radar, great value in DFS, great top forty play. So uh, he feel has that feel of a guy who should be breaking through and uh, getting a win sooner rather than later. I'll uh, take a look at DraftKings darlings um, real quick, guys. I do have a four percent best bet that is up at WagerTalk.com. Uh, it's actually a cross sport parlay. One of the pieces is a golf play. It's available everywhere. Um, we are 11 and four in our last 15 cross sport parlays, number one in that category, last 365 days. It's just, just been a constant moneymaker for us. So I want to make sure that I keep, uh, keep that in the arsenal. So you can grab that, uh, that pack will come with all golf plays for this week. Um, 
coming off a really nice week last week, six and three. Probably should have been seven and two, Mister Scheffler. Uh, had his little <laughs> scarf fuffle, uh, but not, not, not never going to be too upset about going six and three at a major championship. So continue to be number one in golf. So we're going to start with that four percent cross sport parlay, and all golf plays uh, that I'll have for this week will be attached to that. So you get a really nice four percent play, as well as all the golf plays coming up. Andy Lang at WagerTalk.com. Let's take a look at some DraftKings darlings. It's very top heavy. So you kind of have to make the decision in DFS. Do I want Scotty Scheffler in my lineup or do I not want Scotty Scheffler in my lineup? And I gotta be honest, Nick, I want him in my lineup. I've been doing really good with some of these lower yeah. price guys. So I feel like I feel like I can I feel like I can pick the right guys to pair with Scheffler. So uh, my free article is up at wagertalk.com. It's a digital download on my page. Um, if you just want to see the article itself and see the whole DraftKings lineup that I'm using, that's there. It's andylangwagertalk.com, free digital download. But, but for the darlings, I'll start with Adam Svensson at 6,400. Keep your fingers crossed that he makes the cut. He's not finishing near the top of the leaderboard, but he's making the cut. That's six straight tournaments. His only appearance in this tournament was in 2022 where he finished 40th. So we're not looking at a great field, but... Not a great field. He does make the cut. It's a tough course, so I don't expect guys to be going really low. So I don't expect a lot of these like big bonuses about like, oh, you know, bunch of birdies in a row or, you know, eagle or really low score. So guys like Svensson, they make the cut and they're just shooting even par. They're going to be a benefit to your lineup. So at 6,400, Adam Svensson, six straight made cuts. Yep, I'll take him to start off my lineup. Up next, I'll go with Lee Hodges. Um, we talked about uh, Ben on last week as a DraftKings darling just because he really got hot the last two weeks. And sure enough, Ben on was great as a DFS option last week. Well, I'm going to do the same with Lee Hodges at 7,200. Um, he's finished 12th and 24th the last two weeks. Now, the last two years at this tournament, he's finished 29th and 35th. So hoping to ride the hot hand of Lee Hodges at a low price at 7,200. And then finally, Austin Eckroat. At 7,500, he got some nice TV time this weekend. He's been playing great this year. He's made the cut in 11 out of 13 tournaments. He was 16th at this tournament last year. He was really good last week at the PGA Championship. Finished 18th. So um, all signs point to him having a really good season and a, a watered-down field. I expect a solid finish from him. So 7,500 is uh, Austin Eckert's price. So um, that leaves me enough room um, well, Nick, I'll just go over here. Scotty Shuffler is in my lineup. Of course, Taylor Moore at 7,900 is going to be in my lineup. That, like, if you watch the show, it's a Ryan every forever. week. He, he was so underpriced last week. Another great finish. So, um, yeah. yeah, so the rest of my lineup, we'll just do it here, is it's Mark Hubbard at 7,600, Taylor Moore at 7,900, and then Scotty Shuffler at 13,3. So there you go. There, there's, there's my full lineup. So anybody that knows if Taylor Moore is playing this year, he just automatically goes to <laughs> your DFS lineup. He's having a fantastic year. So, All right. We're going to go to a finishing position from Nick, and then uh, we're going to talk about Scotty Scheffler getting arrested and where it ranks in terms of our bad beats. But, Nick, let's, uh, let's try and cash a finishing position here. This guy was really good last week, and he's getting a really good price at top 20. Who do you like? Yeah, I've, uh, I'm looking at the Belgian, Thomas Dietrich, here for, for my top 20 play. And I have – Bet him once before on the sh on the show. He took him as an outright. I think he played absolutely horrible that week. He may have even missed the cut. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm willing to go back to the uh, well here this time on a top 20 market. Uh, you can get him right now currently at plus 240 at DraftKings or FanDuel. This is a second go around here on the PGA Tour, second season. I think he's getting more and more comfortable. Uh, yeah, that finished last week at the PGA Championship, very impressive. Obviously, very quiet. Nobody was paying any attention to him whatsoever because he wasn't. You know Xander or Bryson or any of the big names, but very strong finish. Uh, and really, he's had several strong finishes recently. Start with a tie for 17th at the Valspar, the co runner up at the Houston Open. This is there a classic? I know the partners event, a little goofy, whatever, but tie for eighth there. Uh, and again, last week, tie for fourth at the PGA Championship. He's a phenomenal putter. Another one, I, gu I guess, my skill set that I'm circling in on this week is, is putting. It just happened to be that way, but he ranks 10th. This season in strokes gain putting, uh, and he leads, or he's, excuse me, sixth in birdie average per round because of that putting. Um, he also is, excels in par three scoring. He's got the fifth lowest scoring average on tour 
on par threes. These are tough par threes this week. And again, there's only two par fives, so it just puts a little bit more pressure on your par three or par four scoring, knowing that you can't make up for some mistakes on those par fives later. Uh, while he does only have one start here, uh, he did finish tied for 21st last year. And I know we talked about the course renovations again, but I do think it helps a player, especially like Dietrich, who's you know just in the second go around. At least he's kind of familiar with the property, you know, the clubhouse, the the whole what it feels like to, when you get there, even though some of the things might be a little different for him. But overall, Dietrich has been playing well. I think his value, I think he's just kind of being completely overlooked. I think he should be higher as far as his price. I was surprised to see better than two to one on a top 20 finish coming off that tie for fourth last week. So plus 240, Thomas Dietrich, top 20. You can go higher if you want to go up to the top 10 or whatever. But I think it's very, very solid that we can cash a top 20 on. All right, it's time to talk about some bad beats. Once again, if you have not hit the like button, please do that. Leave us a comment. Hey, there you go. What's your worst beat? This is this is this is about as timely as it gets. Comment section. Leave us leave us one of your worst beats. Uh, we're gonna go over a couple here. Uh, so the the premise of this is uh, Nick and I had Scotty Shuffler to finish in the top five. He's cruising. Um, he gets arrested. Now everyone will say, "Oh, well, he went out and shot minus five that day." He even said the adrenaline got me through that round, and the next day I was exhausted. Like it all just hit him that night. The adrenaline dump. Uh, he was bad, and then he still comes back to finish eighth. So even if you bet him top ten, uh, he still cashed. So losing a golf bet on a guy who gets arrested. By the way, like one of the nicest guys on tour, like the least possible. Yeah. One of the yeah. least. <laughs> so a one in a trillion uh, uh, bet or, that we lose. Uh, in in that particular fashion. So let's talk about a couple bad beats. So um, I have my top three. I've decided that Scheffler makes it into the second spot. Uh, my third my third worst beat, I had a NASCAR head-to-head, uh, Cole Custer over Ricky Stenhouse. Cole Custer qualifies ahead of Stenhouse, leads the entire race ahead of Ricky Stenhouse. Not one lap that was Cole Custer behind. He comes out of the last turn on the last lap and gets a flat tire, and Ricky Stenhouse passes him with 300 feet to go. <laughs> um, so I, lo- I lost like, a bet like that a I was winning college. for every every part except the last 300 feet, and Cole Custer finished one spot behind Ricky Stenhouse. I will never forget that one. Uh, <laughs> so Scheffler so is my number two. Nick, do you have any memories of uh, just a terrible beat uh, that you had? Well, I mean, golf is so fickle. I, I was just going through – like I'm like, all right, well, I'm trying to think of golf ones, right? So I'm, I'm going through my text chain with you, and it's funny because there's – 50 of them in the last two years where I'm just bitching to you on Sunday <laughs> about a guy that's in the top 20, you know, since the first hole on Thursday and all of a sudden he goes boogie, boogie, boogie on 16, 17, 18 and finished tied for 21st. And I'm like, Andy, why, 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 why did, why did that happen specifically? No. I mean, like they're all there. I guess I'm just trying to, you move on from me, try to forget them over the years. Scotty Shefflin will probably always be remembered because it's so unique. When, when, when's it's that ever going to Right. It, it's, it's just it's like gotta be one of the- <laughs> a story like that or, or if what was everybody was expecting to happen prior to him having the baby was he, you know, you're, you're on a ticket with him and he gets pulled out because he's having a baby like that. OK, you know, that would be a bad beat as well if he's sitting there going into the final round. and He's got the lead and he loses because, you know, he has to go away <laughs> that I would expect. But to get arrested, that's just bizarre to me. So now that's one of my uh, all time highs up there as far as, uh, you know, I can't. I didn't. I don't, I don't even I didn't, top it. I didn't have a bet on one. You remember when John Rahm was leading after a couple rounds and he tested positive? Oh yeah, the COVID. COVID, COVID Memorial. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. that one that one was an all-time yeah, so, uh, one, Joe right? yep. uh, uh, producer uh Joe Ranieri, the great Joe Ranieri, can you pipe in uh, you brought one up <laughs> about last year in college football. Can you jump in and uh mention that one cuz I had forgotten about that one. I just talked to my therapist. He thought it best not <laughs> to bring this up. But <laughs> Since you're forcing me to do it, uh, Andy, the uh, the worst of the worst, besides the Yankees blowing a four-run lead in the top of the ninth last night, most recently, would be uh, the University of Miami not sitting on the clock against Georgia Tech, but instead opting to hand the ball off for no good reason, uh, fumbling it, giving Georgia Tech an opportunity to score, and send it to overtime in which they then lost. So, yeah, thank you for that, Andy. I now have to drink. Thank you. 
when they when they when they could have knelt and won the game <laughs> instead they handed off and somehow exactly uh, him, it was a, that was another one in, one in a trillion uh my worst uh my worst bad beat which i will never forget it was uh, a random qualifying tournament it was a heavy favorite team and so we bet on the opposing team to not score a goal and in the game, they had zero shots. Not zero shots on target. Zero shots. They did not shoot the ball one time. You on except Marino? the other, <laughs> uh, well, except the other team tried to clear the ball once. The defender kicked it off of his own face back into his own goal. <laughs> so, so, so we lost a bet on a team not to score when they had zero shots. How do you have zero shots on goal and zero shots? Period. Wow. And right yet there. they score Great a shot. goal to kill our bet. And I, when I watched the video replay, I could not believe a guy literally tried to clear the ball, somehow kicked it directly off of his own <laughs> face right back into the goal. So that one was tough to explain to clients. Like, how do we lose that bet? They didn't have any shots <laughs> on the goal. Well, the defender kicked it off his own face and it went right back. That's, that's my number one. Yeah, Anytime crazy. you have a... Anytime you have a soccer team score a goal with no shots, um, that is a that's, a, that's quite the quite the. <laughs> so, uh, leave us in the comment section some of your beats. Uh, Joe brought up the Yankees. My God, even yesterday, the first five innings, I there was a team. I think the at the Angels and the Astros. I, the Astros had a big lead in the first five, and then the Angels scored seven runs in the fifth <laughs> inning uh, to take that one. They're all over the place, so leave it, leave it, leave it in the comment section about uh, about your worst beat. So, uh, but also uh, tell us your thoughts on the Charles Schwab, Schwab uh, this week. We're anxious to hear from you guys. So, all right, all plays can be found at wagertalk.com. That is Nick Borman from wagertalk.com. I'm Andy Lang from wagertalk.com. Uh, special thanks to Joe Ranieri, who is. Uh, taking the rest of the day off uh, to try and <laughs> relax after getting those memories out of his head. Uh, but thanks to all you guys for watching, and we will see everyone next week on Tea Time.